food cravings and the power they wield can extend far beyond our conscious mind. Tonight, you'll meet a sleep eater, a woman with a mysterious and dangerous disorder that literally compels her to eat almost anything in her path while she is fast asleep. It's late at night and Anna Ryan is restless. Like millions of other Americans, Ryan finds herself drawn to the kitchen for an unhealthy midnight snack. Now what's going on? Um, moving right past the fruit to junk, it looks, I can't tell what it is. Some boxed goodie, probably. ABC News taped Anna's nocturnal activities and we asked her to watch them with us. Now you're accumulating quite a lot of food in your hands. Yes, it's, it's very slovenly. This is just one phase of, of one night. Yes. It's a ritual that Anna says can occur up to four times a night. Again, you find yourself back to the bedroom and now you've got food on the bedside table. Oh, look at that, lying down, chewing. When you look at that, how do you feel about it? It's scary. It's unbelievable. It's sickening. Sickening because from bed to kitchen and back again, Anna has been asleep the entire time. That's my biggest fear. Now that, that's dangerous, isn't it? That I'm going to choke to death. But you had no recollection that you had done any of this in the morning? No, I've never, I never have any recollection. But you're completely asleep? Yeah, it's just unbelievable that I could do those things and not remember them. What you're watching are the shocking symptoms of a disorder that neuroscientists say affects more than a million Americans, most of them women. It's a condition where the patient literally gorges on food while in the throes of a deep sleep. Anna now believes she's been eating in her sleep for up to 20 years. What were the signs that you first started to notice? There was food missing, but then I would find wrappers usually about the house. Sometimes I'd find things out of place. I knew I put something somewhere that night and then the next morning it wasn't there. Diets would work real well and then all of a sudden they wouldn't work at all. A sleepwalker since the age of 12, Anna and her doctors only recently began to piece together a bizarre scenario. One where she raids her kitchen in the dead of night, never for a moment aware of the thousands of calories she's consuming. There's me and then there's this other person who comes at night and I do things that I don't do during the day, so it's like it's another person. It's like the ghost of Anna. <laughs> That's a scary thought, you know. Patients who have a sleep behavior disorder such as sleep eating, when they see the tape of themselves, they truly are shocked saying, my God, I didn't realize I was capable of doing this. Dr. Carlos Schenk is one of the foremost experts in sleep research. He was among the first scientists to conduct a major study on SRED, or sleep-related eating disorder, and has spent the past 20 years trying to understand this medical phenomenon. It's a mixed state of sleep and wakefulness. We call it a dissociated state. We now know with modern neuroscience that the brains of mammals, including humans, can be partially awake, partially asleep. For sleep-eating patients, the problem may begin in one key part of the brain known as the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe, which is right here in the front part of the brain, is the seat of judgment. And brain scan studies and other types of studies show that during sleep, the frontal lobe is shut down. While the frontal lobe is asleep, the rest of the brain may become more active and direct the sleep eater to immediately seek food. They can get up, they see their environment, they know where the kitchen is, but they have no judgment, no inhibition, and that's the problem. During her worst period, Anna says she gained 60 pounds from her sleep eating and she's had to deal with a host of weight-related problems such as hypertension and high cholesterol. But the compulsion to eat goes beyond mere food. At home, Anna and her husband Kenny lock cabinets and pantries because a sleep eater's diet can become surprisingly diverse. It goes beyond food stuff. My nephews caught me in the middle of the night um, eating an SOS pad. What do you mean by an SOS pad? A scrubbing pad, a scouring pad that has like a detergent in it. And you didn't wake up while you were eating it? No, I never, I never wake up when I'm eating. Even though you're eating a detergent? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're eating. We've had patients consume cat food sandwiches. 
They put coffee grounds, eggshells, and Coca-Cola in a blender and consume it. They eat Elmer's glue. They chew on chunks of frozen pizza and then try to swallow it. They're like sleeping zombies, just walking around headless, except that they have a mouth to feed. Many people hearing your story might be tempted to think that it's just a case of hunger, that you're hungry, and that's why you're eating at night. Is that the case? No, that's not the case. There's a compulsion to eat, but it's not a hunger-driven behavior. It's not willpower. It's not a psychological problem. It's a major physiological force coming from within your brain and body to eat at night so inappropriately. <coughs> this overwhelming physiological force is not confined to just sleep eating. It's only one example of what doctors call parasomnias, a group of disturbing sleep disorders that can cause someone to engage in activities that range from sleepwalking to sleep sex or sexomnia, ah! even to acts of aggression and violence, and all while asleep. During sleep, all bets are off. You can do anything. In the safety of a sleep lab, these nocturnal behaviors may appear merely odd. But in the real world, Dr. Schenk believes these patients, including sleep eaters, are putting themselves in great physical danger. People have put napkins in a toaster, started fires, they've cut their fingers, chopping food. We're talking about major risk of injury. Have you ever suffered any injuries? Well, I woke up in bed, scared to death because I'm covered in blood and looking on the sheets, and I'm kind of, you know, checking out to see where it is. I don't see anything, I go in the bathroom, and my front tooth is gone. I was horrified. I fell down the stairs and uh, completely tore my knee out had to have the ACL reconstructed. We've tried physical restraints against medical advice. And what happened? They don't work. I end up hurting myself. But for Anna, the most damaging effect of her sleep eating may have nothing to do with any serious physical injury. When you talk about this condition, what kind of reaction do you get? They laugh. Have you ever got the impression that people think you're basically making an excuse for being overweight? Oh, most definitely. People perceive it as a willpower problem, and it's not. There are a lot of people out there who suffer from this. Taking it and putting it out there takes the shame away. How you doing? All right, how are you? With the help of her sleep specialist, Anna has found occasional success with a combination of drugs, including anti-seizure medications, that work on her brain to lessen her sleep eating as well as lose weight. You want cheese on your... Yeah. But for now, the connection between sleep and eating remains a mysterious one. And like so many other patients with this disorder, Anna's battle to lose weight and get a good night's rest continues. How determined are you to deal with the problem? Very determined. I'm gonna do what it takes to get better. I really don't know what to expect. I just know I'm going to live every day the best that I can. Good night. Good night.